Hello, I'm Nicholas, and this is the fourth episode in the mini series on masking in dark table. And today it's all about parametric masks. Now, parametric masks enable us to select an area of an image based on its color, its luminosity, um, its chroma, so whether it's saturated or desaturated. And those criteria can be mixed and matched, and we're going to see all the options, how it works, and some practical examples too. Let's go. Let's start by looking at the different options we have for parametric masks. So um, I'll take an instance of tone equalizer, and uh, let's not bother about the histogram for the moment. And in this menu bar here, we go to the fourth option, which is parametric mask. And here we have, um, well, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different kinds of um, parametric masks we can apply to the picture. Um, we do actually have different color spaces. Uh, the first one we have RGB, so red, green, blue. Um, the small g here is for gray value, so we have different values of gray. And the last one, the one that's most interesting to me, is JZ, CZ, HZ, which is um, a color space that separates um, your luminosity from the um, chromatic chromaticity and the hue. Um, and the hue is done in a very even way. So it's kind of a little bit like what you have in a HSL, hue, saturation and lightness but in a much more even, um, it's more evenly spread out. It's, um, it's a work, uh, it's a color space, sorry, it's a color space that's more recent, more modern, and um, therefore better adapted to what we'd like to do. Um, let's try them all out and see what happens. So we have some sliders, some input sliders, and these basically uh, will allow us to choose a portion of the scale. Um, so if we grab the triangle at the bottom and move that in and we move get the one at the bottom right and move that in that means we're making a selection of hues from yellow to blue excluding the reds on the left and the blues and pinks and reds on the right we're just keeping the center part here now as before we can have a look at that by clicking on this mask button and you can see that in the rainbow um, I drew, we only have a centre part that has been selected, which is everything that is in this zone here. Now, why are there four triangles? Well, the two at the bottom, the empty ones, are kind of hard choices. We're actually going from here to here, and the top ones are feathering. So, um, no, sorry, it's the opposite. We move the uh, I always move the feathering first which moves them both and but the hard ones are the full ones and the empty ones are the feathering so I can actually move this backwards after I don't believe I do this all the time and we have a feathering that is made on the hues I'm actually selecting between these two hard borders and feathering out gradually uh, from yellows to reds and from blues to magenta all the sliders work the same. Um, you have a here a polarity, which is a really inverting the mask. So we have, if I click on that, we have the exact opposite selection. And you'll notice here that when you're inverted, the um, the selections are actually inverted. So the full ones are at the bottom, which means if I move these in, I'm actually selecting more and more because now the selection is made on the outside. Um, it's a bit more difficult to read, um, but it works exactly the same as when you're the right way around. Um, just think that you're not doing it inside, you're actually outside the triangle. Um, double click on that and it'll go back to zero. So that is for hues. We can also choose by uh, chromaticity. So here I put a gradient, um, I did this with Affinity, so it's not very good, uh, just a gradient with loads of colours. And um, then I made a gradient from kind of desaturated to 
not desaturated at the bottom. So we can have a look here if I um, put the mask on. We have desaturated, so with um, very little or zero chromatist to the left and full chromatist on the right. And we'll just move that. And we should see all the parts with um, less colour have been deselected. And if I move that back, I'll start making a feather. So that is for chromaticity. Very useful. More useful than you'd think, actually. JZ is um, your lightness. So from black to whites. And we are in scene referred here. Um, that, that will be important to us. Um, so I can choose uh, to select maybe just the lighter parts of the photo. Now, um, most of it is actually light. So I'm not going to get much. Um, so here, if I back off a bit, I've actually selected just the lighter parts, which is most of most of the picture is uh, actually quite light. Just those blues there, we know blues, saturated blues are quite naturally dark. Um, so you can run out of space here. Now, what you have on this JZ that you do not have um, on this one, Let's do the same. And uh, yes, you do. Sorry, you have it on both. I only use JZ. You have a boost factor. Now let's go back to where we were. So I'm actually selecting that. Get rid of that. Go back to this. This is where I was before. Let's go back to where I was and try and select. And you'll notice that as we're in scene referred and everything is quite light then i have very little maneuvering space here but you do have a boost factor so i can boost the um, channel here the boost factor of the channel mask is i can actually boost that a little bit which will um just give me more maneuvering space in the lights um so i can just carry on Essentially, I'm just moving up the white point, that's what I believe, so that um, I can actually uh, make a selection with um, a white point that I've chosen. So there I have some lighter portions of the picture. Um, the last three um, I'd like to look at is RGB, um, which look useful, but um, Honestly, uh, very difficult to use. So you'd think here, I'm going to select the reds. So let's put the mask on and select everything that is very red. So imagine that works, look. So I've selected, I'll just, I always move back off a little bit to get a bit of a feather. So I've selected the reds. It's not only the reds, I've got some yellows. There are some, there's a lot of red here. Oh, it's white. So why should that be red? Well, it's red because when you have something that's white um the rgb values are equal and very high so that is for this slider that is red and you'll see it's also blue and also green um double click on that to uh, reset it and let's select some greens so we have a different portion that's selected the yellows you'll see are selected back off a bit the yellows are selected because yellow has a lot of green in it and all the light colors are selected too and that way is where the problem is for me it's because it's not taking into account the lightness of the um of each pixel um basically with the rgs and bs everything that's white will always be selected because the red green and blue contents are very high um blue works the same so that um is basically how you use these uh, these sliders let's have a look at a proper example the first example we'll look at um, is this photo of a tree taken um, this autumn in uh, the setting sun um, i would like to uh, show the light in these leaves a little bit better so for that i'm going to use the tone equalizer um, now I've restarted this video several times because of 
some problems with dark tail, so let's hope it works this time. There we are, tone equalizer, parametric mask, and um, I'll use primarily JZ, CZ, and HZ. What I want to select are these red leaves. Now you'd think, I think you might understand now why I'm not going to use this red. I'm not saying never to use it. I'm saying that it's not as useful as it um, may appear because I want red. So let's say I want to have picked up some reds. So the brighter reds. And those leaves there I want to, um, to modify are selected. But I've also got lots of the greens. I've also got the sky. Now getting rid of the sky is not possible with uh, this slider here. Um, unless I move this down. There, there, the sky is going a little bit. You see, I've got lots of things. Everything that contains red is now selected. And um, what well, the grass is being green contains actually quite a lot in the red channel. So that is not something I really want to use. I will naturally go to hue, um, to uh, chromaticity, and to luminance, the JZ. Now, before selecting at random, just moving these things around, there is a wonderful keyboard shortcut. Um, where if you choose a channel and put your mouse over the slider and press on C, you will see the your picture through the um, through the channel uh, modified using the channel you've actually selected. So I'm actually just seeing here the different hues. So I can see the tree and the red leaves perfectly well. So that means that this channel will be useful to select the leaves. Press on C again and have a look at chromaticity. This one is, for me, I think underused because chromaticity is one of the best selection tools there is. Chromaticity, and there you see all the little leaves, you see the details, and I will definitely be able to use that to select the leaves. JZ, maybe the one you'd go to first is the one I now go to, um, well, after chromaticity anyway. Press on that and I get a black and white image, luminance, JZ. Um, it's rather light. The leaves are blending into the background. Now the boost factor will move the gray point and so everything's a bit darker, but I don't get more contrast. Um, and I can't use that. This zone here is too similar to the background. So I won't be able to use that. Now, how do I select the leaves? Do I move these at random? Well, we have tools for this. We have an eyedropper here. If you click on the eyedropper and choose a red leaf, it will put a little bar here uh, to show me where the reds are. Now, either I can manually select, manually select around there, or I can select a range, a zone, a rectangle, if you like, by just drawing a rectangle in the area containing the color that I want, and it will automatically place some points and the feathering. We're going to have a look at what's selected, and that is actually not bad. Now there's too much selected there because I also have some reds here, some dark reds, which are a little bit in the shade. So I'm going to use the chromaticity sliders to uh, just keep the uh, the more colourful leaves. So just the bottom one and when I'm losing too much I back off there with the feathering so I've got quite a lot of feathering and here you see I've selected the leaves I have a little bit of reds here faintly at the bottom some yellow now I can get rid of some of this by um, using the contrast so the contrast will brighten the brighter places and darken the darker which is when you're making a mask, it'll make more uh, opacity on the parts that already have opacity and less opacity on the parts that don't. So these zones here should kind of disappear as the opacity is moved up. And I can put a little bit of feathering. It's the same options as uh, we used and we discussed on the previous videos with drawn masks. So there, essentially, I have selected the leaves. That looks all right to me remove the mask view and now I can normally just lighten these a tad. Now look at that. 
Uh, the sun's coming through. Might overdo that a little bit, but I don't think it matters for this video. So that is a selection based on two channels. Now we discussed last time the operations you can do with masks, and we said there are only two. Essentially, you can intersect masks, which means that the zone that is selected is where the two masks are, uh, where they overlap. And the union is where either one of them is, then the union of the two will be the part selected. Um, if you've forgotten that the previous video, part three, um, explains that. Um, we have those options with parametric masks. Now remember, the mask manager here is for drawn masks, where you can do intersections and unions. We have here options with our combined masks. Now the vocabulary has changed, which is a bit of a pity for me anyway, because the correct mathematical words are intersection and union. Exclusive means intersection. So, and that is by default is exclusive, which means that it took um, to make the mask. I first of all selected the reds and then in those reds, I selected the parts with a lot of chromaticity, which is an intersection of two masks. I could do the union. If I click on there, I can go on inclusive. And there I'm selecting a lot more. What am I selecting? Well, here I'm selecting everything that has a high or highish chromaticity. Plus, I'm selecting also everything that is in this hue range. Um, I will show you a bit later an example um, where this is inclusive option the union is is can be used um, usually uh, the default is very good because usually when we're selecting we're trying to get um, a very refined uh, part of the picture which we're trying to use different criteria to get down just to one small portion of the picture that we want to modify so usually exclusive will be fine um, okay so that's done for that and let's have a look at something else OK, so this is another photo taken this autumn and um, let's just explore with the colour balance RGB module in parametric masks and let's have a look at what we can do with the hues, chromaticity and lightness. So in the hues, if you press on C, this is what you could do if you want to explore the photo, have a look. Uh, it gives you a different view on the photo. It's not just about um, parametric masks for local adjustments. It's also analysing the picture, which will give you ideas on how to uh, deal with it. So we can see the blues uh, for the fence. Um, if we move around too much, it disappears. And the pavement and the reds and yellow is in the leaves. OK. Now chroma channel. Chroma channel, so the very saturated parts at the back of the image, the, the, the greens. We have the leaves in the foreground here along the path, and obviously the tree. JZ, so we just have a black and white image. We don't learn very much from this channel, really, because we can, I think we're more used to seeing that. That is, we can imagine that already. Um, let's try and select, as it's an autumn picture, press on C. Let's try and select some of these leaves and see this is playing up again, isn't it? I don't want that, thank you. Let's select the leaves and try and make them more colourful. So, um, we know that we're going to try and select the greens, the oranges. So maybe we can go straight in with this and see what we're doing just by selecting bringing those down how far do we have to come just to get some leaves and now back off a little bit and we have some leaves um usually i will use the uh, chroma channel too just to move off um, I'll just take off this. You see, there were there were some greys here that were selected, 
Uh, I don't know if you saw that it was on the pavement. Look, the pavement here is selected. And obviously it's not leaves, it's not something very colourful, it's not something I want. So really I'm getting rid of all the greys just by removing this. There we are, and I have some nice uh, autumn leaves selected. The grass at the back is not too much selected. The tree, let's remove the mask. And if I want to add some vibrance, I already have, have some actually, let's move some saturation up. And let's see. Bit of brilliance. I'll try and do a little bit too much just so you can see the difference maybe on a YouTube video. And what do we have here before and after? There we are. So that is coming out nicely. So that is a second way. It's a bit the same as the first one, just to show um how you can go about doing things. If I want to um just have a look again, let's take a tone equalizer here parametric we have a look at the hues again you'll notice in the hues that uh, here the pinks are coming out really really well um, now it wasn't like that before because the fence was blue if you remember the fence when I did this the fence was blue and now it's not all that it just depends on the order of the pipeline. So I surmise that this tone equalizer being before the input color profile and before the color calibration um, is not seeing the same as the color balance RGB tool. So that is something we can learn from. Because if I have a look at the hues here, I have some purples which means I could easily select these flowers here and give them a bit of a pop. So let's do that. Let's just try and keep. Oh, sorry, I need to put mask on. Mask there up. And that there. And I have just that. I also have these people selected at the back. I don't think that's very important. Maybe I could get rid of them with a JZ and get rid of the darks. Look, they're disappearing. There, oh, look, they've gone. And just keep the brights. So that is intersecting two ideas. I want to select bright areas, so removing the darks and everything which is in the around the magenta. That is intersection. That is what we call exclusive. And now I can just give those a little pop of brightness. There we are. Now what I could do if I have problems selecting those later, this is just an idea I'm having as um, I'm going along, is I could actually have just a tone equalizer. Let's not move those at all, but they are selected. So I do have a selection. And now if I have a new instance of RGB, then I can always use what is called a raster mask. And the raster mask here, I will use the tone equalizer. Normally here I have selected just the purple flowers. And I can modify those if I want and add chroma. I'll do a hue shift so you can see. What's happening there? I see. We shift to blue, turn them to orange. There we are. So that is a hue shift just on that. But you can imagine I would just want to make them pop out a little bit, a bit of vibrance, you see, before and after. Um, so that's selecting with the, uh, just with the hues. Um, so there we are. Just be warned that. Um, when you select a hue, depending where you are in the pipeline, you might not see um, you might not see exactly the same thing. Um, OK, let's go on to a third example. Let's finish this video on parametric masks with this picture of an insect taken from uh, below underneath it. Um, by the way, if anyone has any idea what this thing is, I would love to know. So could you please write that in the uh, comments below? Thanks very much. Um, what I'd like to do with this
picture is uh, some sharpening. I'd like to sharpen the insect. I need to select it and sharpen it. And for that, we'll use an instance of contrast equalizer, parametric masks. And let's analyze the picture. Now you can see the channels we have are a little bit different. We have, um, we're in uh, LAB. So we have the uh, LAB uh, channels and we have chroma and um, hue. So we don't have the more modern um, JZ, CZ, HZ because this module, probably the reason is that it hasn't been redone since that new, um, the, the, the new uh, channels were introduced into Darktable. Um, never mind, let's have a look. Let's analyze the photo. So press on C for luminance. We don't learn much as usual. A, well, here we have something very good. So the insect could be selected using the A channel. And B, nothing much. You can see the, well, I can see clearly the eyes here. Okay. C, same thing, not much there. The eyes, a little bit, we might use that later. And the hues, so they are quite, uh, that seems to be quite good. So I decided to use the, um, the hues. Now why do I do something? Sorry, hues. Oh yeah, because it's actually selected on the whole image. Now I just want to select a rectangle there. Um, sometimes I think it's a shame I can't turn, rotate that rectangle. Um, but I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Um, so I have a selection made. What do I have? I have selected most of the insects with those colors and maybe by boosting the feathering radius, the opacity, and let's get the contrast. I don't know, maybe I've got something there, not too bad. Uh, it's a pity I've, I'm missing the eye here and some parts of the head. So what we will do here is use another channel, but not in exclusive mode, which is in intersection, but in inclusive mode, where I will take some information from another channel and add them to the mask. Now, if you notice, when I go to inclusive, um, this uh, channel uh, has stayed on a positive polarity, and all the others have gone to negative. Here, if you look here, they're all on negative. Now, why is that? Because negative means that I'm inverting the selection. So I'm not selecting between the sliders. I'm inverting on the outside. I'm, I'm Selecting, sorry, on the outside. I'm selecting everything that's left of this one, which is nothing, and right of this one, which is nothing, because it's a union. So anything that is selected will be added. If I turn this one's polarity to plus, I'm actually selecting the entire image, um, which means that whatever I selected here has no relevance now. So it's important to zero out all the selections on all the other channels. And now I can add things back. Now, um, if you remember on this chroma channel, um, there was some white around this area here. So by moving this empty triangle to the right, I'm selecting all the areas of the image that have little uh, chroma and I'm adding it to the mask. If I go too far, I'll soon spill out. So I need to come back. A little bit and maybe have a little bit of a feather not too much actually i don't really need a feather that's actually quite a good selection i could try with the a channel now the a channel if you remember if i press on c i have some reds uh, maybe that will add something so i'm going to move and include some red. So what I'm actually doing is including in the mask these zones here on the outside. That's not really doing much. It's working there. It's not actually doing much. And that's filling out a little bit too quickly. So maybe I'll just forget that double click and I'll just use that selection there, which wasn't actually too bad. Move the feather and radius up. I have added Sorry, the feathering radius up. I have added two parametric masks. That's what I wanted to show you. And now I can add some very coarse uh, 
over the top sharpness just so you can see it there so we have before and after just on the insect on the zones that were selected and it was important for me to select the eyes here um because that is what part of the picture you're going to have a look at um now oh yes last thing before we end um what are the other options so here i have a mask which is inclusive so it's a union there are only two operations on masks on any kind of set in mathematics exclusive which is intersections which means we're going to only keep the parts that are in every single selection we make or inclusive where we're going to keep everything that is in either one or the other or the third or the fourth of the selections we make so the uh, that's a union exclusive intersection inclusive will be a union you can invert your mask so if I'm in, a, in an inclusive mode, I can invert the mask by doing inclusive and inverted. There's no meaning, there's no sense in trying the other two. This exclusive and inverted won't, I mean, it's got no meaning on this particular selection. You're either um, using the inclusive mask that you actually made or you're inverting it. If you want to use exclusive and inverted, then you need to have a mask that was made with an exclusive mode so we can go back to the first picture we had where in the color balance rgb i had and it wasn't color balance it was tone equalizer tone equalizer had a mask here just the red leaves remember that was made ex with uh, an intersection so exclusive between uh, chroma and hue and I can, ex I can invert that mask by doing exclusive and inverted. So I'm just inverting that mask. And that has meaning for this particular image. Whereas inclusive and inverted obviously has no meaning whatsoever. So there are four options. Um, really, the four boil down to two. Either you're intersecting or you're um, doing a union, you're adding things together. And if you want to invert, we just take the correct one. Um, I have, like, I think everyone just played around with sliders and decided that these um, mass combination things had no meaning until I stopped to think for a little bit and try and understand what was happening. So um, that is what I'm trying to share with you with these videos. Um, so that'll do for this video on parametric masks. There is one last video I will make in this series, which is on the last option here which is combining drawn and parametric masks. I think that one will go pretty quickly because I think we've covered nearly everything on masks. So I'll say goodbye and, um, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and see you next time.